Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would do a video to accompany uh, my Ice Cream Fitness Novice 2.0 program. Now, one of the things that always comes up that people ask about is the 10% weight resets. Now, what is it that I've told people? When we're doing our 3x5s, that you continue to add weight every session. Some of the lifts I tell you it's 5 pounds, some I tell you it's 2.5. Uh, one person already asked on that, by the way, does that mean two and a half per side or total? That's total. You need to get some micro plates. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, you know, that might be something I eventually kick out. I might put out micro plates eventually because I, I think micro loading is valuable. It's something I do talk about, something I do myself, uh, something I utilize, not just with calibrated plates. Yes, I have calibrated plates, but I think it has value outside of that. Uh, but that aside, when you start failing, when you start hitting failure, you're failing on your sets, your form breaks down. Uh, we start reducing weight. Now, usually I tell people if you've just had a one-off day and you can't quite complete your last set, you're, you're struggling with the fifth rep, then we don't reset immediately, right? I'll say give it two good workouts. But if you're hitting like three reps and then that's all you can do on the final set, even if you got five the first two, uh, what I want people to think about when I say that you need to go ahead and reduce the weight by 10%, especially when you start getting to where you can only do four, or your fifth rep, your form breaks down on your first set, right? If your form breaks down on your first set or a spotter has to help you or you really grind and, and you, again, form breaks down, you are actually working with a four rep max because these rep maxes assume what? They assume good form, uh, no grinding, no up and down of the bar, no cheating the weight up if you're using fairly strict form on most of these exercises. And so then if you reduce it by 10%, you're probably at your four rep max. So what you're doing is you're reducing your four rep max by about 10%. And I'm gonna go somewhere with this. There's a reason this works, because some people are like, how am I still gonna make gains by reducing the weight while doing the same reps? That doesn't make any sense. And before anyone jumps in with silly mind muscle connection or any of that, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with, with quality work. And it has to do with still getting adaptative stress, right? Because if you are at that point and you're working with your four rep max, let's say your one rep max on an exercise is 100 units. I don't care whether it's 100 pounds, 100 kilos. It's an easy number to work with. Using it as an example, I could just as easily throw 215 in. But 100 is easy. The, the, it's easier to understand on the math. So your four rep max is 90, right? So if you are working with 90 pounds or 90 kilos, we'll call it 90 kilos. So that's going to be a normal number for a lot of these big lifts. It's the range that a lot of men will be using. Uh, and your one rep max is 100 kilos. Now you've been working with 90 at this point, and now you're starting to reach failure. You can't complete your three by five with good form without cheating. Maybe you can't even get all five on the first set. Well, what happens if we reduce 90 by 10% and you look at the chart up above? Where are we at that point? Well, 90 reduced by 10% is 81. So let's say you drop it down to 81 kilos. All right, you drop it to 81 kilos and it'll probably be 81 and a half. It'll probably be 81 and a half kilos because you're going to have to use micro plates and stuff. Where is that going to put you? Somewhere between a seven and an eight rep max. Seven and an eight rep max. Now it might be eight reps. And if it's eight reps, what is it that I tell you guys out there that you need to get growth? What, what have a lot of the experts in the charts and stuff I've linked in the past show you guys? And this is some of the leading researchers say that the generally speaking, the reps that cause your muscles to grow, right? The reps that cause your muscles to grow are reps that get within five reps of failure. So if we're working with our eight rep max for three by five, we are still getting somewhere between two and three reps that are challenging enough to stimulate adaptation, All right? We're getting two to three reps. That means that out of the three sets, and keep in mind, some of the body parts are getting more than one exercise per workout we are getting somewhere between six and nine quality reps. Reps that are capable of pushing the body hard enough to get adaptation. Now, if you are using progressive overload and you are pushing hard enough, again, if you're lifting the weight explosively enough with good form, that six to nine reps that are capable of stimulating muscle growth is actually a pretty reasonable amount on big exercises. That is enough to cause some muscle growth. But here's what we're doing. 
we are bringing things in to a point where you can use good form again, where you can get quality explosive reps. They're not limit reps at this point, right? They're not limit sets immediately, but it's enough to let you recover. It means we've been pushing too hard, adding weight too quickly. We've adapted all we're gonna to adapt to without either uh, reducing total reps or reducing weight, right? Because you can't push any harder. You've been adding weight and you can't do your three by five anymore. Well, we're at that point now where when you do the math, you look at it, you say, okay, well now I'm down to, to 81 and a half or 81. Well, what happens when you add two and a half kilos the next workout? Right, let's say you're at 81.5. You add that, you're now at 84. Now where are we? We're dealing with somewhere between a six and a seven rep max. Now we're doing five rep sets. We're getting, again, higher quality. We're getting at least three reps per set. So that's nine per workout that are going to be capable of stimulating muscle growth. If you're eating enough and sleeping enough, you will actually grow off of doing three sets of five with your seven rep max. Might not be optimal growth, but you are getting great recovery because our volume is in check on this program. The intensity is not at the maximum level there, but volume is pretty good. So now you're gonna get nine reps on that exercise that it's causing growth. Well, what happens when you add another two and a half kilos? Because that's what you're gonna do again, right? You're gonna go to up to 86 and a half the next workout. Well, now we're dealing with very, very close to your five rep max, or at least your previous five rep max. This is enough to cause some muscle growth. And it's now getting very, very close to being your three by five max, isn't it? Right, 86 and a half, when it, 87, if you look at like that middle chart, is probably around your five rep max. What happens when you go up another two and a half? We're now getting almost to that threshold. We're getting almost to that threshold where you started failing before. We are now exceeding your previous five rep max, but you've had multiple workouts to adapt to the new weight, to get quality reps in, to get sleep, to get food, to hopefully have grown a little bitty tiny amount of muscle mass. And if you did gain a little tiny amount of muscle mass, your five rep max might actually be 89 now, right? It might be 89 instead of 87 or 88. And so now it's gone up. Your work capacity with that weight has gone up. So therefore, you're going to end up doing more total tonnage. You're going to get better stimulation with it. And then you're going to keep bringing it up until it plateaus again. And then you do the 10% weight reduction. Now, a lot of people are going to look at that and say, well, Jason, you can't do that forever. I mean, a lot of people are going to plateau repeatedly. Yeah, they will but it probably isn't going to be novices. Intermediates would plateau doing that, but novice lifters? Novice lifters, as long as they reel it in enough and they back it off 10% and they get their recovery in check and they're being honest with their efforts in the gym, they are getting enough sleep, they're getting enough protein, they're getting enough food. They are going to grow after they reeled that weight in just a little bit, right? They're still going to grow from all that, but they're going to recover better because they've backed down their intensity a hair. And then they're going to bring it back up. But they're going to bring it back up as they're growing again to go in conjunction with the recovery. So what's the end result? They gain a little bit of muscle. They gain a little bit of strength. The next time they plateau, it probably will be at a slightly heavier weight. And if they can't, if they repeatedly fail to do this, if we get on all your big lifts, you start stalling on all of them multiple times, that's when the novice lifter needs to address number one, am I taking enough rest between sets? Am I eating enough food? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I getting all of those things? If the answer is no and you fix whichever of those is the problem, you will probably push past that plateau again. If you are answering all those honestly, and let's say you've plateaued now two or three times at the same weight on several of your big lifts, and you know you're sleeping enough, you know you're eating enough, you know you're getting three minutes or more between sets, and you're still having that problem, well, you may not be a novice lifter anymore. You might need to go to a more advanced programming. But here's what I would say to people. If you are still capable of making gains on a novice program, you should make gains on a novice program. Why? 
because novice programs are programmed to give you the fastest gains possible. Intermediate programs are programmed to make you grow at an intermediate rate, which is slower. It's not good. Advanced programs make you grow even slower, but they at least help you to grow at all, which is difficult to do the more advanced you get. But that's why we do the 10% resets. They actually do work. And usually people who are failing on these novice programs and they stall at really low weights, like, oh, I'm stuck at a 225 squat and I know I'm eating and all this other nonsense. It's because they're not doing the weight resets, right? That's half the time that's the problem. And that's usually fixable. And that, that's why we do them. I'm showing you guys the math there as to why we actually do it that way and why it works. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.